Kaga, not uh, who is our standard? Jesus himself. Jesus is the standard. Okay, so we saw that because we are saved by grace, there's nothing that we contribute towards that. It is free of charge. But from the time we are saved until we leave this earth, we'll give account. And the reward we are given in heaven is not for getting saved. We don't get a reward for getting saved. That one we got free of charge. But the reward we will get will be what you used that life for, the life that you got. When you got it, did you put it to good use? Did you allow it? That's what the reward give, God gives us at the end is not for getting saved. There's no reward for that. Is that clear? So our, from the time we are saved up to the time we leave, we constantly make choices, either for good or for bad. And every good choice you make, you're allowing that life to grow in you. That is the being. And that's why Jesus will thank you, good and faithful what? Servant. Because from the time I gave you this life, you've utilized it. So you use the form of a talent, I mean a parable of the talent and others, because that life he gave you does not sin. That is the very nature of God. The one which sins is your soul and your, your body, which is constantly fighting the inner life. Amen? Now, summary. This new life has to be fed. It's called Zoe life. It is your responsibility to do what? You feed it on kalo. Uh-huh. On what? Uh-huh. It grows from babyhood to and God wants it to dominate and motivate, to motivate you and dominate you. Meaning everything you do is motivated by that life within. This is the real process of every believer. If we don't do this, you have big babies. People who have been in church for 20, 30 years, but they are quarreling the same way they quarreled it, eh, before. They are still the same, same habits. Eh? Those same, same habits have to shed off every time this life grows. It's like plants. When you see the plant, every time the plant is growing, the old leaves automatically fall off. That's how you are supposed to be. As that life in us grows, these habits start to what? To follow. It's not a struggle. It's a, you are planted by the rivers of water, as David put it, so that you are like a tree. So when, when that tree is growing, these old leaves, eh, if it, you take an example of bananas, the more it grows, the more a sanja. In Uganda, we call it a what? A sanja. Those old things start to sh shed off. This is the process. Okay. We looked at six stages of development. Who can remember them by heart? Let me see. I, did I come with my money? <laughs> <laughs> How many of you remember the six stages of development revealed in the scriptures? The eh? Okay, you use the English words. Uh huh. Mm. Eh? Okay, all of. Now you can copy. Let me put it there. <laughs> so we looked at these stages. And they have put the, I put them here for those who are sufficiently interested in the study of the word and you who are supposed to teach and disciple others. This is the process everybody goes through. Let's use the red word. The first one, nep. Second, third, fourth. So this is the process. Those are the six stages. And we see Jesus referred to each one of those, and I put those there. Go back, and uh, out of these uh, 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 characteristics we p I put here, you can easily locate yourself. How many of you are able to locate yourself? You not tell us, uh -huh, <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> you are able to locate yourself. Is, is anybody bold enough to tell us where you found yourself? No, oh, don't. Okay. <laughs> You don't want to tell anyone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> this is very important. This is self-assessment. Okay? So you mark yourself every day. Print it on a big thing and put it in your bedroom. So that when you come back, you say, but uh, have I really moved? 
<laughs> Since I got saved, I might still, you see the Corinthians, Paul told them, you people, you should by now have been mature. Look at where you are still. You are still taking milk. You are nepios. So he used that word, nepios. Eh? The Hebrews. By now you should be taking meat, but you are still taking what? Milk. milk. Because nepios take milk. Now this one is now a child. This one is now the, uh, uh, the stage of a what? Uh, I think child. Isn't this a child? This is a child now. The baby is much smaller. But now this one is a child, Pideon. Okay? So, but the characteristics will help you a great deal. And I put them there I I I intentionally so that you can really mark yourself. But if you're a pastor, you check on all the people you pastor <laughs> and say, how many have I moved from Nepios stage to Huos? Yeah? We have a <laughs> Because when you appear before the Lord, you will take two harvests. The first harvest is what? Being. How far have you grown? But if you have not grown, can you make your congregation grow? So you, they will also be mature because the sermons you give them will be milk. You yourself are taking milk. Can you serve meat when you, are, you yourself are still taking milk? So that's why you need to grow yourself. Currently, we have so many leaders who are babies themselves. Bishop talked about it. They don't wait to be sent. They, 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 they just went. They were still immature. They needed a lot of help, but they wanted butala. They wanted this. So they can't lead others to maturity because all they, th they think that by building a big thing, an organization, a big name, that's not spiritual maturity necessarily. No. Because people of the world can do that. They can use mental eh, gymnastics, speaking big words, and build a big thing, a big organization. Building a big organization does not mean you've actually have grown. No, that's very, very important for us to see, especially in our day, when you have so many people coming up all the day. They don't wait to grow. They are not ready to serve anybody. They are not ready to submit. And they are not mindful about growth. But they are building big things. Yes, that's a big, big issue. They don't even work with each other. No. That's how you tell. Yeah. There is always competition, jealousy, what? That's why we have that kind of confusion. Especially when they get on radio, TV. So you get so much confusion in the body. Yeah. So you don't want to be part of that confusion. That's why we are telling you here what we do here is to equip you so that you can really tell. And if you see the majority of the people you are associated with are in a POC group, you realize, eh, that means this is where I am myself. Because if I'm enjoying this company, that means all of us, we are like this. So you're not growing. And those people will not also help you to grow. Because that's all they, yeah? it's all, you find very few children of uh, a character who enjoy the company of, uh, normally if there were others, she would be running to the other children because they always enjoy the company of your, yes, your peers. So that is what is important here. So make sure, have you taken a photograph of this? You are getting free of charge. Many, many hours and days and months of, 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 of study for you, you are, yeah? Jesus said you are reaping where you did not sow. <laughs> so I want you to go. You can, you can add more here in this column here. You can redraw, draw it and use it for you to disciple, especially you who are dealing with children, who are dealing with ministries, who are dealing with your staff. You are, all of us are responsible to raise up leaders. Okay. Now we also saw, you remember this? You see, this is a typical example. Somebody is born again at, at 25 years with a lot of yeah, taking eight meals a day yeah, of, of kalo, of a shabwe, of matoke. But when it comes to the word, it still remains what? Nep. At 25, at 30, you see here the bios, the, uh, this is your natural, natural age. Then the one on top, Zoe, is your 
spiritual. That's supposed to be. You are supposed to be growing. Within about five years, somebody should have moved from Nepios to Pydion. Within about ten years, he should have moved from Pydion to Technion, and so on. But you still con physically you continue, but spiritually you stagnate. Amen? This is a summary that I want you to go with and put it before the Lord in prayer. Every day. That's why I want you to put it in your room, bedroom, so that you look at it and remind yourself, am I growing? Am I developing? One day I'm going to stand before the Lord and I'm going to be accountable. Every day and every choice contributes to this process. Yeah, the, because they, they have been made, yesterday somebody asked it there. The Bible talks about the end times, that people will have itching ears. They will heap upon themselves teachers who only speak what they want to hear. If you are uh, used to, someone is just, just say, oh, you are cute, you? you are wonderful. You are, yes. Hey, so, so people just come, to, it's like uh, in the world, what do they call, what do they call it? Uh, motivational what? Uh -huh. Motivational speakers. People want motivational speakers because they are depressed. They are so they come where they can be what? Motivated. Now the word brings motivation but in a different way. Today or during this weekend, we don't only motivate you but also we prick. We challenge you. You understand that? You live happy but you are also challenged. You, you realize I have something to what? To do, not just to say, ha, uh, you've crossed. Yeah, so, so somebody goes back and says, ah, two, 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 two seconds. No, so there's nothing for me to. So then the other issue is, as you rightly said, if people don't, you don't encourage people to read the word, no amount of your speaking will change them. It's the word that feeds this life here. If all you are speaking is motivation, is uh, just to, 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 to tell stories, so people laugh all through the sermon, and they go back, guys spoke. But were they challenged? Did they repent? Was there sin that you, you know? Somebody should leave, like we left yesterday, we went into the uh, 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 woods, and you, you, you had time with God, there has to be something that moves you. Does that make, yeah? Do you understand what I'm, I'm talking about? I'm not saying we shouldn't encourage people, but you, you should both uh, combine both the encouragement and the challenge. They should go together. They came downcast, they have had a, 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 a testimony, but then there is also a challenge for me to grow. I cannot remain, eh? There. Do you think God just allows us to just, eh? uh, allows to be lousy and what? That's why God allows these challenges to come our way. No problems comes to you without God's knowledge. But why does he allow them? Those challenges will make you better if you move, move with him. Does that make, does that make sense? Yes. So that is the point. Remember the word, and I'm going to end with that shortly, okay? Now, how do we change... How do we grow? Practically, I want to give you a few things for the practice, and that's what Bishop asked. And I'm going to end with that in the few minutes. There are three steps, and they are outlined in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. Let's read them together. 22, 23, and 24. That you put off concerning the former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the dis so the first step is what? The second, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How do we get renewed? The word of God. God wants to download his thoughts so that they come in us. Uh -huh. Then 24, and that mm. So you're putting off Zueta and you're putting the life of Christ in us. And you do that through the word. So you see? So the put off the old man. What is the old, is old man yesterday? What word did we? 
that is the bios life, the natural life. It combines your soul and your body. That is bios life. Then, how? By the word. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then number three, allow the Zoe life of God to dominate you. Take a picture of that. So that is the process. The process of our transformation is like that. If people don't like the word of God, you can't help them very much. You may try, you may pray for them, but you can only go so far. You are limited. There has to be an effort on their side constantly for them when you, when you stand, <laughs> stand here, you can just, okay. So when, when, when you, if all you do is just praying for people, people, and you don't equip them, they'll be dependent on you all the time. They will not grow. You be, make them babies. They are babies all the time. Pastor, teach no one. Pastor, it's now here. So you keep chasing the things eh, in their bodies. Eh? You may pray for them initially when they're Nepios and Pideon, but as soon as they start to go, you need to equip them so that they can do the, it themselves. Yeah. They learn to pray for themselves. You give them the scriptures, how to use them, and so on. Okay? Now, so, put off the bios, put on the zoe. In between is the word of God. Amen? It's the scriptures. So we saw that yesterday. Putting off. What do we put off? Uh, so you see the lower part here? You are constantly putting off and you are constantly putting on. By the time you finish, it is his own life which is dominating. John put it this way. I keep decreasing so that he can uh -huh. So that's what he's talking about. The life of God in you increases so much that people no longer see this woman who used to quarrel, hmm? who used to gossip. Every <laughs> but after some time, no more gossip. <laughs> You've changed. Christ has taken over. You used to grumble a lot. You're no longer grumbling. You're peaceful. You used to be f to fear. You come from a family which is full of fear, 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 anxious, anxious, anxious. Yeah? Worry, worry, worry. Why do Christians keep worrying? For what are they worrying? God does not expect us to worry. Are you aware of that? Somebody one time said, how can God expect us not to worry? I said he wouldn't tell us not to if we couldn't. Yes, you can do it away with worry. It's the life in you. Do you think God is worried? So that's the life he wants you to live. If, if God is not afraid, God is not worried. So when that life dominates you, you're not worried. Some people have lived in worry for so long that the day when they are not worried, they get worried why they are not worried. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so <laughs> the, the life he has given you, yes. So they feel something is wrong. Why am I not worried? Why am I not afraid? Why am I not anxious today? Something is wrong. So they are now anxious. Why they are not anxious? So the, <laughs> the old life decreases. The new life increases. This is it. The opposite is the upper one. You get very old, but you still inside you are still a what? A baby. The serious thing is when you finally get to heaven and turn up in heaven, and you're just a baby. On earth, we have had a powerful funeral service for a whole week because you had these people from this side, from this side, they are all celebrating your life, but all they celebrated was bios. What you accomplished by your bios life? The speeches. Eh? In Luke 16, the rich man died, and there was a big funeral service, and Lazarus, nobody attended. He just said Lazarus also died. Nobody <laughs> talked about Lazarus. <laughs> They don't even mention that he was buried. Maybe the dogs ate him. But where did he end? In uh, Abraham's. The rich man had a powerful funeral service. A plus, there were three, four, five eh? funeral service providers. What, what, what? Many of us focus so much on those things. Eh? Have you heard people? <laughs> so you see, people are so worried about how they will be buried. Even if you crash in the plane and get burnt, 
if your life there, that life doesn't get burnt. So our life doesn't get burnt. Even if you disappear in the lake or the sea or in the ocean, that's not very important. As long as your life was what? That's what the, the real life that gets to heaven. So when you get there and you come, spend all your life, imagine 90 years on earth and all you achieved spiritually is a what? A baby. So you arrive there with a big funeral service on earth, but you end up in Sunday school in heaven. <laughs> so people from Elah wonder, eh, so you meet so and so you, eh? And some people, some, some people are so enamored with the, uh, our denomination for, for us, uh, Baptists, for us, we are Pentecostals. Heaven is not going to have those. After Pentecostal, you arrived in heaven and I said, we don't have those things here. Oh, where is Bishop Orombi? I want to see to where he is. No, there is no that thing. <laughs> there will be no such a thing in heaven. We are going to move according to your what? <laughs> yeah. Those who have grown will be sit with him. He says, if he overcomes, will sit with me, as I am seated with my father, who is in what? In heaven. So the closer you are, the more you mature, the closer you'll sit with the Lord. Those who are babies and what they'll be far. <laughs> okay. Now let me Requote that verse which Bishop started with. Let's read it. This book of... Mm. But... How often? Why? You see the doing? Eh? Uh-huh. For that... Hmm. Don't go for the wrong success. Go for the good success, which flows from the word. Okay? Now, the summary of that is? Think the word. Mm. Speak the word. In order? The what are the results? You will prosper. And? Have this is the formula for what? This is God's formula for true success. Okay? Look at this one. Let's read together. Blessed is... Mm-hmm. Mm. No stands in the path of sinners. Mm. No sits in the seat of the strongholds. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm. And in his law he meditates day and night. The key is meditation. Meditating is the word how often? Day, day and night. The same way you eat food. Man shall not live by food, this physical food, but by eating the spiritual food because man is spirit. Your spirit doesn't eat color, it eats. And that's, you do that by meditation. Okay? It shall be like a tree. Mm. 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 Hey, but what uh, shall prosper? I thought you knew it by heart, so that's sorry. <laughs> okay. The last, this is the, the, the last, second last slide. I thought my sister here asked, she's having a problem with reading the Bible. So I've summarized a few points here. When you are reading a passage of scripture, if you make it a point that every day you have a, the best time of your day, give it to the Lord. Very early in the morning, I recommend. Very, very early in the what? Before you put in anything else. So when you read a passage of scripture, look for the six points I'm pu I've put there. Take a picture of them. Six questions. What nature of God is revealed here? So you go picking everything about God because everything starts with what? With God. When God is coming to us, he reveals himself to us. That's what we did with Isaiah, with uh, John, with everybody. So first look for God in every passage. Number two, what do you look for? Because they are opposites, you'll quickly see that God is this and look at what man is. These are very important. Uh, it takes a, a long time to, to, to uh, uh, understand this, but it's very easy if you start to practice it. The second question, you look for the nature of man because you'll quickly see where you need to pray. You yourself will find yourself there. Is there a command to obey? Is there a sin to avoid? Is there a promise to claim? Is there an example to follow? 
this will be a guideline for you. You understand, sister? This, this will make it very easy for you. So suppose you go through those, suppose the whole chapter is 20 verses. Go through the 20 verses, find God. Read it again, find the nature of man. Read it again, find if there is any command. By the time you've gone through that passage, it, it is started to sink in you. Does that make sense? It is washing your mind because the word washes. But it's practical because it's helping you to find yourself out. And by the time you finish, you pray according to what you found. But you, suppose God is kind and you are not kind. So you say, Lord, I really need the, the life of, of your life to flow into this area of kindness. I already have the kindness in me, but I'm not allowing it out. Uh, the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart, but I'm not loving. So allow, I'm praying that this love will start to flow. It is all deposited there. It's just that this bios, yeah? Remember, the, lo the love of God is already inside. You're not asking God to bring it. It's already there. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, Romans 5, 5. So the love is already there. You only need to what? To release it. So what is it that is stopping it? It's the bios what? Ziweta. Ziwambaza. Eh? Because Ziwambaza is hateful, is angry, is bitter. So that crook on, on is, is what is stopping it. So you are, your prayer is based on the word of God. And finally, you need to keep a book, a journal. If you are serious enough with God, you surely must have a book, at least this size. Eh? This one, and I've encouraged all of you, always have a book at least this size and more. Because if you use the small ones, they will get lost very easily. If you use papers, the lifespan of a paper is only a day. You may end up using it in the toilet, losing it in the toilet, or what. So you get a big book which cannot get lost, and make sure you write your meditations on a daily basis. Get a book, which is your daily journal. Some of you are now digital. You can do that. I'm now using digital. I used to travel with a lot of books. Now I use digital. But you can use the book. Write down your daily meditation. Pray through those passages that you have analyzed. Note the impression. This is very important, how you learn to hear God's voice. As you read through this passage, you'll get impressions from God. It may be pictures, it may come like a picture, it may come like... But once you teach your mind to calm down like that, you'll start to hear his voice. He'll give you impressions, inward witness, all that. That's how he guides you. And when he sees that you're taking it seriously, he'll give you more. Why should he give you when the ones he's giving you, you're not taking them seriously? That's why you write. You write everything. Write the date, write three things. The date, the day, the place where you are, and the time. Yeah? So you say prayer mountain on, on Sunday, the 8th of June. 20, yeah? So then when you are going back after a year or two, you realize, hey, in 2024 February, the Lord told me this. Look at what happened. That helps you a great deal. That will help you to follow the guidelines the Lord has been giving you. So you, you start those impressions, will make, you combine them, and you see where God wants you to go. So every year you go through them, and this will, your, your key issue is spiritual what? Development. You grow, and you become a giant. In the flesh, you're a small man or woman, but in the spirit, you're what? A giant. A giant, you sit there, and when demons see you, because they see a giant. They have eyes to see in the spirit realm. They see what we don't see. People look at the water appearance, the demons also look at the inward. Thank you very much. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you.